Hello, I'm Amanda Stout, climate scientist at the National Wildlife Federation. Let's start off with a multiple choice question about winter weather. Which of the following are consistent with what we expect from global warming? A. Winters are warmer and shorter on average. B. Snowstorms are heavier with greater accumulation. C. Heavy winter rainfall and extensive flooding are more common. Or D. Midwinter warm spells followed by cold snaps cause extensive crop damage. The answer? All of the above. While global warming will bring milder and shorter winters, it also is expected to bring heavier snowstorms, especially in places that get lake effect snow. These changes in winter weather are already having peculiar impacts on wildlife, forests, and agriculture. For example, warm temperatures in November 2009 led brown pelicans to stay in the Chesapeake Bay region this winter, rather than migrate further south like they usually do. When the region got a bitter cold snap in January, the pelicans were stranded and had to be relocated to a temporary indoor location. And it's not just pelicans are acting strange. Without bitter cold temperatures, mountain pine beetles are surviving over winter and causing unprecedented destruction of our forests in Alaska and the West. And some important agricultural crops, such as walnuts, peaches, and cherries, require a certain exposure to cold in order to flourish. Many cities and states also face large economic uncertainty from this oddball winter weather, especially in regions where winter recreation provides a significant tourism revenue. Many ski resorts will see shorter, rainier seasons, which will negatively impact the $66 billion industry and the tens of millions of Americans who ski each year. And even in areas without such recreation, Budgeting for roadway snow removal and wintertime flood management will be more challenging. We can keep winters cool and safeguard communities in nature. Curbing global warming pollution as much and as quickly as possible is an essential first step. At the same time, we need to take steps to help communities, winter-dependent industries, and wildlife prepare for some changes that we can no longer avoid. The fact is, we can no longer plan based on the climate we used to have. For more information, check out www.nwf.org slash extremeweather.